Hey guys, welcome back. In the last lecture, we set up the test environment for our application. Now in this lecture, we will work on our first test coverage for user model. But before moving that, I would just like to tell you that I upgraded my apps Ruby version from 2.7 to 3.1.2 because uh, with 2.7.1, I was getting this error trying to register bundle jam file error for status code 4, but bundler jam file error is already registered and this error happens with our spec in Ruby 2.7.1. Okay, so it's better if you can also improve your Ruby version. So what you need to do to upgrade your Ruby version, first go to the gem file. Okay, and into the gem file, just replace the 2.7.1 by this 3.1.2. And then in dot Ruby version, what you also need to change your mention your Ruby updated Ruby version here. Okay, and when you do this, you will not get this error. That is trying to register bundler gem file error. Okay, so now again let's come to our R spec switch to the terminal and generate the spec in factory for the user model so here in terminal what you need to do rails g r spec okay and here we need to mention that for what we want to create the spec so we want to create the spec for the user model so we will add model okay and then your model name so this will generate the spec file for the model with username or for user model. Okay. So when you generate this command, you will get two files created that is spec models user spec.rb and spec factories users.rb. And now visit both the files. So switch to the project. Okay. And into the models, you can see user spec.rb and into the factories, you can see users.rb. And before moving towards implementing these factories and specs, I would also like to tell you that in the gem file, I added one more gem that is the gem faker. So if you want to create dummy data, you can also add this gem faker into a gem file and then run the bundle install and that's it. You don't have to do any extra configuration for this gem. Okay. And now open this users.rb factory again and into this factory, we will define the user attribute values. Okay. So first we can uh, check that what attributes we have in the user model. So open the schema.rb and into the schema.rb you can see that we have name, email, city, state, country and contact number. So in the users factory what we need to do name and then picker name and then name with middle. Okay and then the other attribute is email. So you can provide email picker internet and then email the next attribute is contact number so for contact number you can provide values like uh, picker phone number and then cell phone with country code you can find all these faker methods with at the faker gems documentation so i would like to tell you that uh, visit the faker gems documentation and look at all these faker modules and its method names okay and uh, you can also provide values as plain string like this country so you can add let's say india okay and then state you can add let's say mp and city you can add let's say in the okay so this is how you can provide values from the faker gem and you can provide values from your plain string as well so i explained both the ways now it's your choice that whether you want to use the fakers gem values dummy values or you want to provide your static string values okay here you can also face the country state and city from the faker gem itself okay and that's it now open the users spec Okay, and there we will write a very simple test case to see if our test setup is working fine. So into the user spec, first remove this pending line because now we are not going to do any pending uh, block here. We will just write our first test coverage. So first we need to define a context here. So how we can define context? So context, then provide a empty string for now and then just end this context block and here, you can provide any value to this context as a string or you can also provide some class name or module name itself okay but let's understand that what context is so context is used 
to define the example group and an example group can be considered as the collection of tests. The context keyword is not mandatory, however, but it helps to add more details about the examples that it contains. So what context value we can provide? So we can provide, let's say, when creating a user because we will create multiple coverage inside this context. So when creating a user, okay. And now we need to define our coverage inside this context. So this context will be considered as the example group and whatever test cases or coverage we will write in this context are known as the examples. Okay. But before that, we need to use the let keyword. Okay. In that way, like uh, let then user and then build and user. So, okay. So let user build user. Now let's understand why we use this uh, let keyword and what it does. Okay. So let generate a method whose return value is memoist after the first call. This is known as known as the lazy loading because the value is not loaded into the memory until the method is called. The value will be cached across multiple calls in the same example, but not across examples. I mean, if you have multiple test coverage inside the same context, then you can use the same let user. Okay. If you have multiple contexts, then in every context, if you want to use let user, then you have to define. Okay. Now here, the let will generate a method called user, which returns a new instance of user model. Okay, you can use it in the same way that you would call a normal Ruby method. Okay, also here I used build user because I just want to instantiate the user model to check if it's a valid instance. If you wish, you can directly call the create as well. Now we need to create an example in this context. As we already discussed that context is an example group that can have multiple examples. Okay, and we use it blocks to create examples within a context. Okay. So it blocks should be enough to tell that what should happen in this feature or when this test get executed. And this is how we can define our it blocks. So inside the context, you need to write it, then it can also accept a string or a class value. Okay. And then just define this block and end it. Okay. Now in this it block, we need to write our logic or whatever operation we want to perform or whatever functionality we want to test we need to write in this it block okay again let me repeat that uh, this context is an example group and this it is an example or actually the test case that we're gonna write okay now we need to provide a value to this it block or a name to this it block Okay, as I discussed already that it block should be enough to tell that what is going on. So you need to name your it blocks in that way. So here what we can do it should be valid user with all attributes. Okay. Now save this and here what we need to do user dot valid. Okay and then we can add here true okay it means if user is valid then it will be compared with the true value and it will return the like sorry it will return the test is passed or failed okay here you can see that we defined the user with let here and now we are using this user inside this it block okay and never try to define or never try to call the let keyword inside an example group as you will get an error Okay, now let me explain that why I use this user dot valid equal to true. Okay, for example, first open the user model. Okay, and into the user model, you can see that we have validations for name, city, country, contact number, email. Okay, so we need to check that uh, all these values are valid or a user instance is valid and ready to save in the database. Okay, or it does not have any validation error. So we need that's why we are returning user dot valid equal to true so we wrote our first sample spec now it's time to run this spec so switch to the terminal and run so first go to the terminal and you need to run sorry r spec and then spec your spec directory name and then file into that spec directory that is user spec dot rb okay and when you run this command you will see that the spec is running 
here you can see what we get one example zero failure okay it means this is an example okay and it gets passed now let's change this true to false okay just to make sure that if we are setting it to false because since we have all valid values for the user's attribute so it should be valid always so if we do false now okay and now let's see what happened when we run this test okay so when you execute this test you will again see that one example zero failure that means this test case or this example is going to pass in every case whether it's true or false but this should not happen okay why because our user dot valid will return true but true equal equal to false will be false so our test case should fail here okay so what we need to do here to get fail so we can do that uh, user dot valid dot should we can use should method should equal to false okay and now run this spec again and here you can see the test has been failed that is one example one failure and here you can see expected false go true but we are also seeing the deprecation warning with should okay so we need to remove this deprecation warning and we need to use this in some different way so how we can do that switch to the spec again and here you need to remove the should and just remove this false as well and here what you need to do expect user dot valid and then two and then eq false okay so eq is the matcher which check the equality between the results okay so we are we trying to match the equality of user dot valid result with false so it should fail this case test case should fail now okay without any deprecation so save this file and switch to the terminal and now run the spec and you can see that our test case has failed so what we are expecting here that is false and what we got is true so true equal equal to false is always false so our example is getting failed here and test coverage is not passed okay so now change this false again true okay and now run this spec again and our test case should be passed now okay so when you run this you will get your test coverage pass okay so one example zero failure okay and we do not have any deprecation warning so we saw two different ways like using should and using expect okay with should you will get the deprecation warning but with expect everything working fine okay now initially i told you that we should not use this let keyword inside the it block so if you use this let inside the it define it and then try to run your spec okay and now save the file and run your spec file and you will see that one example one failure and the reason is that let is not available within an example okay so it means you can use the let inside an example group but you cannot use let inside an example okay so what we need to do here we need to remove this let from this example and instead we need to use this inside this example group okay so now when you run this spec again your spec will work and your let is defined in example group so it will work and return the correct result okay so that's all about this lecture in this lecture we learned so many things like uh, what is context what is it what is let and how to define let and where to define let and where not to define let okay and i hope you found this lecture very helpful and thanks for watching this stay tuned and let's meet into the next lecture till then tata goodbye take care stay safe